Hi everyone and welcome to Waterhouse Ford. Well, it's gotten bitterly cold. Well, I mean it's not as cold as it could be. Of course it's going to get colder. Um, but we're down to about 8 degrees at the moment. And uh, I've got no heating in the workshop here, so it is a bit of a struggle uh, to get back down here and to, to get on with the jobs. Um, we're going to try and sort that out uh, this year and see if we can get, uh, get some heating in here. Um, but look, I have been doing a few odd jobs this afternoon, and uh, I thought I'd, I'd just uh, share a few things with you just quickly. It's only going to be a short video, um, really just mucking about and uh, keeping myself out of mischief at the moment. Um, so yeah, look, I'm going to take you around, we'll go handheld in a minute, and uh, just show you a few things that I've been playing with uh, this afternoon, and uh, hopefully it'll be of interest. So the first thing is we've put a lot of effort into the workshop now um, a few videos back and I'll put a link um, you saw us painting the, the workshop uh, since then what we've done is we've put these um, benches up, these workbenches and also got a place down the bottom here for uh, some of the parts for the tractor and on top of this bench what I've done is I've put this plastic um, it's the plastic that they put on walls in the in, in commercial kitchens, uh, which I, I managed to get a, a few sheets of that. Um, and what I've done is, as you can see here, I've, I've bent it, um, just heated it up and bent it round to cover the front. And then again at the back, you can see over here, I just uh, I bent it again 90 degrees to go up the wall, just to give the wall a bit of protection um, when we're cleaning. Then what I've got here, this is a um, it's a wood lathe, um, the head from a coronet wood lathe. And what I'm using that for is uh, basically just as a wire wheel for, for doing some, some, some cleaning, essentially. Um, so the general idea is over here we've got let's call it the dirty space um, so this is where I will strip um, items to um, you know, ready to clean and I'll come back to what's going on there in a minute things that um, need or can go into the ultrasonic cleaner they'll go in obviously in there you can see that's um, that's busy heating up at the moment um, and then what we'll do, oh, it's actually just cooled down, but anyway. Um, and then we'll go through, you know, kind of wire wheel, wire wheel uh, any sort of sanding, any scraping that needs to happen. And finally, um, hopefully into um, the shelf, onto the shelves down the bottom here, which is essentially the parts that have been cleaned and uh, are ready essentially for reinstallation. Now, this afternoon, what I've been doing, let me show you a few of these. Let me just get them out. I'll just get the first two out. Um, so basically what I've done is I've organized uh, all the bits into these bags. Um, so having cleaned everything, I've, I've now got them nice and clean. And I made a bit of a glare on, on there, but essentially nice and clean, put them in these bags, label them so I know what they're from, and I just sprayed a little bit of duck oil into the bag, um, so to obviously to keep them from um, to rusting or corroding until <clears throat> I'm ready to reuse them and, and probably re repaint them. So that seems to be working quite well, and getting, getting through most things there. There's a lot of cleaning. Um, I mean, anyone who's done this before will know the I mean the amount of cleaning that needs to happen, but you know, and here we've got the old TVO tap that we we've seen a few videos on. That's wrapped up and ready to go, protected. We've got the the sacrificial carburetor there. I'm going to try and rebuild that one actually again, um, and then the the carburetor that we rebuilt is there, ready to go. And right at the back there, we've got the distributor. Uh, which again, you would have seen me seen the video on us rebuilding that. Um, so yeah, we've done a, quite a few, mostly cleaning jobs this afternoon. Now, what's going on here? I started stripping 
This is the regulator. Obviously, it was uh, mounted on the battery holder, which again, that all needs to be cleaned up now. Um, and what I needed to do, obviously, was to label the cables. Um, it's a very interesting arrangement. Basically, the wire goes through this little, I suppose it's a ferrule, um, and gets bent over, and then that ferrule basically gets pushed into these holes in the bottom of the bottom of the regulator. Now, some of you have probably seen it before, you're probably very familiar with it. I've not seen that, that sort of arrangement before, uh, so I thought that was quite interesting. Um, but what I've done, I basically put a cable, a little red cable tie onto each of the cables. So one there, two, oops, sorry, two on that one, and then three on the third one, and of course nothing on the fourth one. So I now know that those cables go into the regulator in that order. So number one, number two, number three, and of course number four, the one without any uh, cable ties. So yeah, I just thought that some of you might find it interesting, just a way of marking cables. Obviously, cable ties are, are quite a nice way to do it because they don't come off easily. Um, if you use, if you try to use a, a, a permanent marker, sometimes with the cleaning process can, can, can make them come off, can, can, you know, can remove the permanent marker. Look, this wiring loom, I mean, it's not complicated. There's only a few wires. It's been through the walls a little bit, and uh, some of the insulation is not great. Um, say, for example, see this here. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on that. You can see there that the insulation is not fantastic. So I probably will replace this, but until I've made that decision, I thought I would uh, just mark it so that I know where all those cables go. So. Here we've got, as I said, the four ferrules. We've got the um, plate that, they, that sits above those, and that pushes them in. And there's a Bakelite insulator there as well. These are the little clips that go on the side to hold the cover on. I'll show you the cover in a minute. And then just the, the screws that hold all of that together. Now, so that's at the dirty station. As you can see, there's a lot of, a lot of dirt here that all needs to be um, cleaned up. And so from there, now obviously because this is an electrical component, I won't be putting that in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. So that's all going to have to be cleaned up manually. I'm trying to get this, trying to get some of this rust off here, and this dirt off the side. There's a lot of dirt on the bottom, as you'd imagine. Years and years of tractor grime and uh, whatever going in there. Um, the other thing I've noticed these these insulators, they are. I mean, they're gone, basically. There should be a rubber grommet in there. So I'm going to have to work out how to, to re-insulate that. And that's basically to insulate the body of the regulator, sorry, body of the regulator from the chassis of the tractor. Because obviously these bolts, these ones here, go through there and uh, bolt it onto, onto the, the bottom of the battery box. Um, and yeah, it needs to be insulated so that obviously it doesn't short out. So, I'll need to work on how to do that again. I, I suspect you can probably still get them. If you can't, if I can't, then I'll have to try and make some. This is a brass ferrule that's in here, and then obviously it's supposed to have that rubber all around the outside to, um, to insulate this. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you quickly was this. Um, so this is the, the top of the regulator. You can see, hopefully you can just see the Lucas name there, made in England. Now that, was in a much worse condition. I've uh, had a go at trying to, to clean that up. You can see a couple of part numbers and, and stuff there. So look, that's what we've been doing. Um, this wire wheel on the lathe is working really well, much, much better than the pillar drill, which is what I was using before. I'll just show you, switch it on. Um, this has a three it basically has three speeds you can see the belt arrangement in there and as you can see I've got it on the on the middle uh, speed at the moment I honestly don't know what that speed is I could probably look it up I had it on the highest speed and look it works really well but it's just a little bit aggressive so 
I've dropped it down to the middle and that seems to be working quite well. Uh, it means you have to, you know, it takes it a little bit longer, but only fractionally, nothing, nothing really to, um, to, 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 to worry about. There's a lot of other parts. Uh, if you saw, our, I think it was the second video, I went through that crate and I showed you all the different parts for the tractor. So they all still now need to be gone through and uh, get everything cleaned up nice and nicely so that we can um, get them all ready for, for painting. And then of course we've got the tractor itself, which still uh, we haven't managed to get on with the, the crown gear um, and, and get the trumpet housings back. Um, basically waiting for parts. Um, haven't been able to get all of the parts that I need. Um, still need to do some cleaning inside there. You can see still a, a bit of muck in there. Um, but, you know, this project, is, as I've said all along, it's going to take a while. It's not something that we're rushing through. Not something that's going to be done um, in a few weeks. It is going to take a while. But you can see the rest of the tractor there. Look, the bonnet's just resting on there, just so that it's out of the way. Um, but that all needs to be sanded, and um, essentially the whole thing will need to be will need to be painted. So what I'm trying to do, whilst I'm waiting for parts and, and not actually able to proceed with the bigger jobs, is um, I'm just kind of filling my time with taking on some of these smaller jobs and trying to get them ready, so that when it comes time to paint. Everything's ready to paint, hopefully, in one go. And um, I can get everything painted pretty much at the same time. You see, there obviously you've got the trumpet housings, the real axles, the crown gear, um, etc. So look, that's it for this video. Um, hope that's been interesting. I know there's not a lot, a lot, a lot of material in it. Um, but, you know, we're cracking on, getting as much done as we can. And of course, all these little jobs need doing as well. I don't know the state of this regulator. Obviously, you still need to determine uh, whether it actually works or not. But um, I'm hopeful that it does. And I uh, hope that it will be in good shape. So we're going to give it a go. And of course, there's just no way to know um, until we get it all hooked up. Okay, everyone. Thanks for joining. And uh, see you on the next video.